Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I begin in the name of Allah who is most kind and most merciful. Assalamu alaikum boys and girls. Tonight is the seventh night of Muharram and the seventh night of the children's majalis program. We will begin the program with the recitation of the Hadith Kissa. And now you have the option of listening to it either in English or Arabic. Whichever one you choose to listen to, both will be an invitation to the angels and the Ahlul Bayt to join and bless our gathering. We will then move on to the three times recitation of Surah Al-Asr, which will be followed by an explanation of the Surah so that you can see and understand what makes this Surah such a helpful and important part of the Quran. Our majalis today will be about Hazrat Qasim, Imam Hussein salam's nephew, a wonderful young boy who fought very bravely. We will end the program with a nauha and ziyarat. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hadithi Kisa, the story of the blanket, an event narrated by Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. The purpose of this book is to help our younger generation better understand this beautiful hadith with which we so often commence our gatherings. Inshallah, our children will have a stronger belief in the greatness and character of our Ahlul Bayt salam, as they build a deep and unwavering love for them. Jazakallah khair to everyone who assisted in the completion of this book. May Allah reward you in this world and in the hereafter. Ameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I begin in the name of Allah who is most kind and most merciful. The following story has been narrated from the Lady of Light, Sayyida Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. One day in Medina, my father, the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, approached my house. As he stepped inside, he greeted me. Assalamu alayki, ya Fatima. This means, peace be on you, O Fatima. Alayka salam, I replied, meaning, upon you be peace. A little while later, my father said to me that he was feeling a little weak. I reassured him, however, that Allah would protect him. Within a few minutes, my father asked me to bring him his blanket. This blanket was a special one from Yemen, which is a country far from Medina. So I brought him his blanket and covered him with it. As I stepped back to look at him, I saw that his face started to shine. It was almost as if I was looking at the glowing full moon. My father, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, was such a special person that Allah made his face shine so bright. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam rested, my older son, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, came home. Assalamu alaikum, ya umma, he said. Peace be on you, O mother. Wa alaikum assalamu, ya qurrata aini, I replied. And upon you be peace, O light of my eyes and happiness of my heart. Imam Hassan alayhi salam then said to me that he could smell something very nice. It reminded him of his grandfather, the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I told him that he was right. Naam. Yes, your grandfather is underneath the blanket. Imam Hassan alayhi salam moved towards the blanket and said, Assalamu alayka ya jaddahu ya Rasulallah. Peace be on you my grandfather, the Prophet of Allah. He also wanted to settle under the blanket with his grandfather, but he asked for his permission first. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam answered, Wa alayka salamu ya waladi and upon you be peace, my son. You may come under the blanket with me. Happily, Imam Hassan alayhi salam went next to his grandfather. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and Imam Hassan alayhi salam rested, my second son, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, came home. Assalamu alayki, ya umma, he said. Peace be upon you, O mother. Wa alayka salamu ya waladi wa ya qurata aini, I replied, and upon you be peace, my son, O light of my eyes and happiness of my heart. 
Then Imam Hussein alayhi salam said to me that he could also smell something very nice. It reminded him of his grandfather, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I told him that he was right. Nam, your grandfather and your brother are resting underneath the blanket. Imam Hussein alayhi salam moved closer to the blanket and said, Assalamu alayka ya jaddahu. He too wanted to settle under the blanket with them. Like his older brother, Imam Hussein alayhi salam also respected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so much that he first asked his permission. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam answered Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Wa alayka salamu ya waladi, and upon you be peace, my son. You too may come under the blanket with us. Imam Hussein alayhi salam too settled in beside his grandfather and brother. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and Imam Hassan alayhi salam and Imam Hussein alayhi salam rested, my husband Imam Ali alayhi salam came home. Assalamu alayki ya binti Rasulullah, he said. Peace be upon you, O daughter of the Prophet of Allah. Wa alayka salamu ya abal Hassan wa ya amir al mu'mineen I replied, and upon you be peace, O father of Imam Hassan alayhi salam and the commander of the faithful. Imam Ali alayhi salam then said to me that he could smell something very nice. It reminded him of his cousin, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I told him that he was right. Now, your cousin is resting underneath the blanket with your two sons. Imam Ali alayhi salam moved closer to the blanket and said, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Peace be upon you, O Prophet of Allah. Imam Ali alayhi salam also wanted to join the Prophet and his sons under the blanket, but he too asked permission first. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam answered Imam Ali alayhi salam, Wa alayka salamu ya akhi, and upon you be peace, my brother. You too may come under the blanket with us. Then Imam Ali alayhi salam also went under the blanket next to his cousin and his two sons, Imam Hassan alayhi salam and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Imam Ali alayhi salam rested, I went towards the blanket and said, Assalamu alayka ya abata, ya Rasulullah. Peace be upon you, my father, O Prophet of Allah. I too wanted to join my father's sons and husband under the blanket, and so I asked for permission. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam replied, Wa alayki salamu ya binti, and upon you be peace, O my daughter. You too may come under the blanket with us. Happily, I went next to my father, sons, and husband. When we were all together, my father, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, held the two ends of the blanket and raised his right hand towards the heavens. As he did this, he prayed, O oh Allah, these are the people of my household. Whoever hurts them hurts me as well. Whoever is their friend is a friend of mine as well. They are from me and I am from them. O oh Allah, send your blessings on us, the Ahlul Bayt. Allah watched all of this, then said to his angels that he had not created the sky and the earth and the shining moon and the bright sun and the rotating planets and the flowing seas and the sailing ships, except for the love of the five people lying beneath that Yemeni blanket. Allah's trusted angel named Jibra'il listened to what Allah said and then asked him, Who are those five people underneath the blanket? Allah the Almighty explained to Angel Jibra'il, They are the household of the Prophet and the blessings of prophethood. They are Fatima, her father, her husband, and her sons. Angel Jibra'il asked Allah, Ya Rabbi, O oh my Lord, may I fly to the earth and join them in their gathering? Allah the Generous replied, Naam, you are given permission to join them. Jibra'il, the trusted angel, landed near the five Ahlul Bayt and greeted the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alayka ya Rasulallah. Peace be upon you, O Prophet of Allah. 
Then Angel Jibra'il told the Prophet وسلم, that Allah had also sent his salams to the Messenger. As well, Allah wanted the Prophet وسلم, to know that he had not created the sky and the earth and the shining moon and the bright sun and the rotating planets and the flowing seas and the sailing ships, except for the sake of the five people who were under the blanket. The angel Jibrail informed the Prophet ﷺ that Allah had given him permission to join the five members under the blanket. Yet, out of respect, he asked the Prophet again, May I join you, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah? The Prophet of Allah ﷺ replied, You are granted permission to enter. As the angel Jibrail took a place under the blanket, he said to my father, Allah sends this revelation to you. Verily, Allah so desires to remove all impurities from you, O people of the house, and purify you with the complete purification. Allah has created you, Hassan, Hussein, Ali, and Fatima to be pure and perfect. You never make any mistakes or commit any sin. Allah's wish is for you to always remain this way. My husband, Imam Ali salam, wondered why it was so important for all of them to get together under the blanket. He asked my father, Ya Rasulallah, why has Allah made this event so important? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam explained to Imam Ali salam that whenever and wherever followers and friends of the Ahlul Bayt have a gathering and talk about this event, Allah will send his blessings and mercy upon them. Also, Many angels will form a circle around them and ask Allah to forgive their sins which they had previously committed. My husband Imam Ali salam, was delighted at this. He exclaimed, Then we, the Ahlul Bayt and our followers, will be successful. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, also explained that whenever the followers of the Ahlul Bayt have a gathering and talk about this event, Allah will make sure that anyone who is present in feeling sad will feel better, and anyone who is feeling upset will feel calmed, and anyone who is waiting for a wish to be granted will have his or her desire answered, inshaAllah. Again, Imam Ali salam was delighted. Happily, he said, Allah has made us the Ahlul Bayt and our followers, the winners and the lucky ones, in this world and in the next. Ameen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Auz billahi min ash rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim Welcome to the Children's Majalis program. Today we are going to look at Suratul Asr. You have all been listening to and practicing Suratul Asr for the last few days. Today we will look at the meaning and understand the concepts introduced in Suratul Asr. Suratul Asr is surah number 103 and contains three ayat. 
Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wala asr. I swear by the time. Inna al insana lafi khusr. Most surely man is in loss. Illa lazina amanu wa amilu swalihati wa tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sabr. Except those who believe and do good and enjoin on each other truth and enjoin on each other patience. Let's look at some of the benefits of reciting Surah Al-Asr. Recite 10 times for stomach ailments. Recite to reduce fever. Increase in Iman and Nur on Qiyamah. Recite in Aisha Salah for safety. The key concepts of Surah Al-Asr. Asr literally means to squeeze. Here it is used to describe the concept of time. In the sense of it meaning the squeezing of the past unfolding as the future. The surah points out that human beings are at a loss unless they, number one, believe, number two, do good deeds, number three, advise each other to truth, and number four, advise each other to patience. Ayah number one, wal asr, I swear by the time. What time does this refer to? This may refer to the time of the Prophet, or maybe the time of Asr on Ashura, or it may refer to the time of Imam al Mahdi. Time is the most valuable thing every human being has. Whether you are rich or poor, it really doesn't matter. Every human being has 24 hours in a day. What we do with that time makes all the difference, doesn't it? Ayah number two. Inna l-insana lafi khusr. Most surely man is in a loss. Here the reference is not just to men, it is to all humans. All humans are at a loss. What does that mean? Human nature is to be confused and dissatisfied without any calm or peace. Humans fluctuate from one thought to another, one idea to the other. No sooner is one situation under control than he must move on to another, which is chaotic. Ayah number three gives us the path to avoid loss. Except those who believe and do good and enjoin on each other truth and enjoin on each other patience. This provides a relief from the confusion by guiding us to do what is good and right, which includes advising each other to truth and patience, which is Amr bil Maruf and Nahi anil Munkar. The highest degree of patience is that which is exercised when, when one keeps away from haram. Now let's look at this ayah a little further. Iman means to have faith. One of the bases of our Iman is believing in usul -e din and furu -e din the roots of the religion and the branches of the religion. Let's review the usul and furu of our religion and then ponder on how strongly we believe in them and how they manifest in our lives by our actions. Roots of religion are five, Tawheed, Adalat, Nabuwat, Imamat and Qiyamat. Branches of religion are ten. Salah, Psalm, Hajj, Zakat, Qums, Jihad, Amar bil Maruf, Nahi anil Munkar, Tawalla and Tabarra. Let's look at some of the good deeds we can perform. Looking after our earth, for example, not wasting, reusing, recycling are all good deeds. Giving charity is a good deed. Being kind to parents, helping ones in need are all good deeds. What the wasaw bil haq and enjoin on each other truth. The beauty of our religion is that we are encouraged to always help each other to do good. Goodness should not be limited to ourselves. 
In this surah, we are encouraged to teach others, help others, and encourage others also to be good. What the wasal be sabr, and enjoin on each other patience. When things get difficult, we need to be patient. Here again, we are reminded to encourage and help each other in being patient. It is always helpful if we have friends and families helping us in taking the path of patience and strengthening our faith and iman. Let's look at the important qualities emphasized in Surah Al-Asr for humans to be successful. Number one, belief in Allah, the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt. Number two, doing good deeds. These would include, in addition to prayer and being honest, to always be on the right path and help each other. Number three, do not limit goodness to yourself. Help and guide others to do good as well and to be patient. Remember, in Islam, it is never enough to just be good ourselves. It is our duty to help others to do good and be patient. Now let's look at the people of Karbala in the light of Surah Al-Asr. Imam Hussein alayhi salam was martyred at the time of Asr. Imam Hussein alayhi salam was a true portrayal of the qualities described of a successful person in this surah. He was on the right path and he propagated the truth to others, including his enemies, till his last breath. He was very concerned about helping and guiding each and every person in Karbala. Imam Hussein and his family and friends all showed a high level of Iman and patience in the face of extreme difficulties. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the guidance and ability to follow the principles taught in Surah Al-Asr, insha'Allah. Ameen. Thank you for listening to the Children's Majalis program. Please continue to watch and listen during the 10 days of Muharram. Every day is Ashura. Every land is Karbala. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Welcome to the Children's Majalis program. This is the seventh night day of Muharram program. Today we are going to talk about Hazrat Qasim alayhi salam. Hazrat Qasim was the son of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. His mother's name was Ramla or Hazrat Umm Farwa. Imam Hassan's brother, as you all know, is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So, which makes Hazrat Qasim's grandparents Imam Ali alayhi salam and Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam. The event of Karbala took place in 61 AH. Let's go back to 50 AH. In 50 AH, Imam Hassan alayhi salam was poisoned by Jahda, who was instigated by Muawiyah. At that time, Hazrat Qasim was only three or four years old. Who was Muawiyah? We have talked about Muawiyah in one of the earlier majalis. He is the father of Yazid and the son of Abu Sufyan. He was responsible for the death of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. The night before Ashura arrives. Before we go to talk about Karbala and the events, I just wanted to remind you again that history happened a long time ago. It has been written and rewritten. Not all the versions of the history are the same. We will try our best to recount the events as they have been narrated by the historians. On the night before Ashura, Imam Hussein alayhi salam was reading out the list of martyrs. He read the names out loud. Habib, Zuhair. One by one, 
all the names were read. When Qasim, the 13-year-old son of Imam Hassan a.s. asked his uncle, O oh, uncle, O oh, uncle Hussein, is my name not on the list? Imam asked Qasim, Qasim, how do you view death? Qasim replied, O oh, uncle, death to me is sweeter than honey. The day of Ashura arrives. Qasim was only four years old when his father was poisoned. He was brought up by Imam Hussein alayhi salam, who considered him as his own son. Qasim was not yet balik on the day of Ashura. He pleaded for permission to go to the battlefield. Imam told him he was the remembrance of his brother, and he did not wish to see his nephew killed before him. Qasim was disappointed and ran to his mother's tent. Umm Farwa found out that her son was sad. She told him to take the letter that Imam Hassan a.s. had given to her to give to Qasim when he was in trouble. In the letter, Imam Hassan a.s. asked Qasim to represent his father on the day when Imam Hussein a.s. would be surrounded by an army of thousands. On seeing his brother's handwriting, Imam Hussein wept and said he had to obey the wishes of his brother. Qasim rode to the battlefield and with a loud voice introduced himself. He killed several soldiers. Then Qasim saw Umar ibn Sa'd giving water to his horses. He told Umar ibn Sa'd, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're giving water to the horses while the children of Hussein are crying of thirst. Soon, Qasim was attacked by one Amru bin Sa'ad bin Nufail al-Azadi. May the curse of Allah be on him. When Qasim fell, Imam ran to his help and attacked the enemy. When the dust settled, Imam found himself near Qasim, seeing him painfully scraping the earth with his feet. Imam lifted his nephew holding him to his chest and took him to the tents with his feet dangling and drawing lines on the earth. Let's look at some of the lessons we can learn from Hazrat Qasim. To be loyal to your Imam. Not to be afraid of death if you're on the right path. To be a representative of your parents if they are not present, the way Hazrat Qasim represented Imam Hasad Salam in Karbala. Thank you for attending the Children's Majalis program. Please continue the program with Ma'atam. Every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala. Memories, I should always full of mysteries. I should always full of mysteries. Karbala, why do you hold such memories? I should. Starts with morning, Muharram is our beginning. The seasons tears are flowing.
Blood was spilled there Ashura Al-Hussein was murdered here Ashura Al-Hussein was murdered here Have you but seen what exchange there was between Abbas, Zainab and Hussein If only present you had been My master, have you but seen what exchange there was between Abbas, Zainab and Hussein If only present you had been Karbala Scene of our calamity Ashura Days of our catastrophe Ashura Days of our catastrophe I hear the name of Abbas And I remember his story When he went to the Euphrates To confront all the enemies When I hear the name of Abbas and I remember his story When he went to the Euphrates To confront all the enemies Karbala My hero you took from me Ashura You slaughtered his family Ashura, you slaughtered his family. Hujjad Allah, I have one more reason to retell you But I lack the words to say what terrible action will do Ya Hujjad Allah, I have one more reason to retell you But I lack the words to say What terrible action did Karbala Grave of the Imam Hussein Ashura 
the time I relieve his pain Ashura The time I relieve his pain Karbala Why do you hold such memories Ashura بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليك يا رسول الله يا نبي الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين يا علي بن أبي طالب السلام عليك يا خديجة الكبرى أم المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن بن علي المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله ولا الأرواح التي هلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أسهاب الحسين خصوصا سيدي ومولاي يا عبا الفضل العباس ابن أمير المؤمنين وأختك زينب أم كثوم وبنتك سكينة جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا علي بن الحسين زين العابدين السلام عليك يا محمد بن علي الباقر السلام عليك يا جعفر بن محمد الصادق السلام عليك يا موسى بن جعفر الكاظم السلام عليك يا علي بن موسى الرضا السلام عليك يا محمد بن علي الجواد السلام عليك يا علي بن محمد الهادي السلام عليك يا حسن بن علي العسكري السلام عليك يا حجة بن الحسن يا صاحب الزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك يا كعبة الإيمان السلام عليك يا إمامنا وإمام الإنس والجان عجل على ظهورك عجل على ظهورك يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن عجل على ظهورك عجل على ظهورك 
السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته